Is it warm in here? Welcome to the Health and Happiness Show. As many of you know, I, Janet Hawkins, will be your host this evening. And also, um, probably some of you are wondering if you're just tuned in. I am an herbalist and I just passed my exam for a traditional naturopath now, certified through the medical board. And what I do is I do consultations for clients. Uh, people will come in and they'll set up an appointment and I do the iridology. We offer several different things. Uh, I started out doing iridology like 30 years ago. I studied with Dr. Jensen. Uh, he has now passed, and um, I was very fortunate to study with him in the late seven, uh, 90s. So uh, what we try to do is we try to get to the root cause of what is causing your energy to be down maybe. Maybe you're not sleeping at night. Maybe we have high stress. Everybody is different. So what we try to do is get your body back into balance. And whenever we talk about balance, that includes nutrition, includes exercise, and it also includes the two S's, stress and sleep. And we're going to talk about those later on. The fact is that we are now going into the winter months. Now we're going into December. And um, what had happened is our time changed. So what is happening? We're not as getting as much daylight. We don't have as much sun now. So we really have to focus on keeping our immune system well and uh, try to do as much as we can nutritionally. And it's a little more of a challenge during this time of year because we aren't growing a lot of our foods and we do get them from the store, but we don't know how old they are and how much nutritional value is actually in it. So, you know, we're going to talk about some different options on what you can do to help your nutrition and keep your immune system strong this evening and for our One Healthy Minute. So just what you have to understand, we do the iridology when clients come in and then I do muscle testing as well. And that's where you hold something up to your chest. Everything has an energy rate. Your arm stays up strong. You need it. It goes down. You don't. And I explain all that to you when you come in. Um, so, you know, I can't just say, you know, we have many Nervines. We have Stress J. We have the Seven Flowers. We have Nutricom. We have Skull Cap. We have Valerian Root. We have so many different ones. Which one is for you? We are all unique creatures of God. What may work for me may not work for you. So we have to listen to what your body is telling us. And that's why we will do the muscle testing. What is so interesting is when clients come in for the first time, I have them bring their supplements that they're taking or their medications as well. And many times they're taking like six, seven, eight prescriptions. Don't get me wrong. We all need our primary care doctor. But I like to work with my primary care doctor. I would like for him to work with me as well on the holistic field. Because when we do a medication, it is covering up the symptom. It's not going to the root cause. Don't get me wrong, blood sugar problems, diabetes, things like that, yes, you need your insulin. But say, for example, you have high blood pressure. Uh, you know, get some weight off, start exercising, take some magnesium. Just, we have different things that we can use. And we'll talk about that in February on the month we'll be talking about heart health, the different options that we have. So what we do is whenever you come in, you bring the uh, supplements that you're taking. And I first thing I do is I look at the ingredients because I always read what is in it. It's amazing, probably a third of the time there is a dye in it. We can't have any dyes in anything. It can be carcinogenic over a long period of time. So we have to do quality products. And that's why I'm very particular in what I carry. I personally carry my most popular uh, supplement company is Nature Sunshine. They have been in business for over 50 years. 
I have been to their plant like three or four times. Unbelievable. They check for bacteria, mold. They check for heavy metals. They check for everything. And we know it's quality. So uh, that's the one I uh, usually carry 90% of the time. And then I carry Pure Herbs, which is a liquid herb. The tinctures are very powerful. Like we have someone maybe with, uh, let's say for example, they have asthma. Of course, we would use ALJ. You've heard me talk about that before. And that's gonna go in and help the respiratory system. It has fenugreek, thyme, horseradish, help you breathe. And then we would also put them on Indian tobacco, which is lobelia. And the thing is, this is a liquid, and they're going to take that, and they're going to rub that on their chest, and they can take it internally as well, and that's going to relax the bronchioles as well. Also, what is so interesting about the Indian tobacco is, it's a little lobelia, it's another name for it, is you having muscle cramps in your legs, put that on externally, it's gone in two minutes. But we're trying to get to the root cause on why you're having those muscle cramps. Usually it's calcium, magnesium, things of that sort, and we'll get you started on that as well. So that's just a few examples of what we do, or I do, to try to get to the root cause. So what we do is the iridology, we do the muscle testing, and then we listen to your body, and then if you want to really go a step further, then we do the saliva and urine testing, and that goes in and tells us exactly what's going on. And usually we try to change the internal environment. And I haven't talked about this for a while, but I brought the little chart along as well. So whenever, because uh, I do a lot of shows, <clears throat> and uh, what I do is holistic psychic shows, and that's where I go in and do iridology at no charge. And then I am finding more and more that people are so acidic. And with us going into the holidays, this is a big, big challenge because we're eating a lot of sweet foods, our sugars, our pastries, our alcohol, and we're eating things that we normally don't eat during the holidays. And then when we're too acidic, that is when disease begins. And that's why I really, really endorse the chlorophyll. The chlorophyll, you just add it to your water, and that's going to go in and balance your pH. You just, it's a liquid, and we'll pour it in there. Here, would you like some too, Kathy? We'll just pour that in there, and there we go. Thank you. Okay. So, um, as you can see, it's very, very green, and this is going to go in, and it's going to balance your pH. So, whenever we're too acidic, that's when disease begins. This comes from like soda pop, coffee, and stress. Seeing so much stress today because of the uncertainty with the world today and the way things are going. And then also, this is going to go in and balance your pH, it's going to detox you, and also it's going to help your hemoglobin, which is your red blood cells, and that carries your oxygen as well. So all you do is add it to your water and drink it throughout the day. And then if I, but perhaps I have a little bit left over from when I do a show, because I have samples of it, I will put it on my plant, especially my hibiscus, it'll bloom in two days. So if it's doing this for the plant, imagine what it's going to do for you. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But uh, so I just wanted to tell you what we do is try to communicate a respect for people by presenting a solid foundation of natural health and business principles. So whenever I put you on a program, I give you a printout on what the supplement is all about. So whenever you go to the primary care doctor, you can go to the doctor and say, hey, this is what um, Janet put me on. And this is an example of a piece of sheet of paper right here. It's called elderberry defense, which we're gonna talk about that. So I give this to you and you can share it with your primary care so he understands. But the first thing you always, always have to remember, and I know many of the people I talk to, they're not even aware of this. If you're on any medication, do not take your supplements, vitamins, minerals, anything together an hour apart because a lot of times you're on blood pressure meds and there's a diuretic in there and so it'll pull it right out. So why would you waste your time and your money? We want to keep our body healthy and moving and alive. So that's just one thing that you always have to remember. 
Okay, so here we are. We're going into the holiday season. So um, we all want to be healthy. So I want to talk about the immune system, first of all. I know I personally, on Monday, I'm doing the recording here on Thursday. Monday, I started to sneeze and get the sniffles. I said, uh-oh, I had either the allergy, so I took my ALJ, but I still had a you know runny nose and just felt like I was getting a cold. So what I did is I took my vitamin C. This is a vitamin C that I like, and it is in a powder form. We do have it in a capsule, uh, but this is the one I like, and I put it in a uh, liquid drink, and then I actually put it in this drink right here, and these little packets, and you open it up and make a little drink out of it and add the vitamin C. So I did that after my vitamin C, and then I really hit my olive leaf. I took a teaspoon at least four times. Today is Thursday. I'm fine. It started clearing up in like a day and a half. So I'm just telling you, there are tools out there and supplements that you can take, and that is going to help you boost your immune system. We have, you know, I've been very, very busy, and then, you know, I'm not eating as many live fresh greens. So what I am using too is, I do this every morning now, it's the hyper greens. So this is in a powder form, which I think is an excellent choice, especially during our stressful times, trying to get ready for the holidays, doing the cooking, doing the shopping, and you're working, shuffling kids to Boy Scouts or basketball practice or whatever. So you take a teaspoon of this, and I like personally, <clears throat> I don't particularly like it just straight water. We have some cider, so I mix a little bit of cider and then to fill up the rest of it with water and add a teaspoon of this. And I add probably about a cup full of water and I shake it up in my shaker and I drink it every morning. Unbelievable. Let me tell you what's in this Hyper Green. The Hyper Green is all organic, of course, and it has barley grass. It has wheat grass. And remember, I used to grow my own wheat grass. I swear by it. It's really good. It just takes so much time to grow it and it's getting very pricey as well so I go this route and it has some spinach powder in it and it also has some alfalfa powder it has some coconut powdered milk and it also has beetroot powder and a little bit of ginger tomato powder and a little bit of dulse as well and then they use stevia to take the bitterness out. So stevia is a plant sugar substitute. So this is really, really going to help your energy and it's going to get your greens. So I will be doing this, I'm sure, through March, April, I'm sure, because I'm not getting sufficient greens and I really like this. I've tried many different green powders and this is the best one that I have found at this time. So I'm just giving you some suggestions because you can always give me a call and um, I always have it in stock. I've just ordered another eight. So we have it available because I have two people waiting for it now. So I'm just saying this is a good way to get your greens. Of course, still do your green, you know, organic loose leaf lettuce salads, things of that sort. But you know, now that we're into winter time, it's the season where you want to cuddle up and you want to be warm and you want warm soups and things like that. Well, we're going to talk about that later. We're not getting a lot of the enzymes that we need because it's heated over 180 degrees, 118, I'm sorry. And so we need to go in and do the green powder is what I have found. So um, to keep the immune system strong, I personally like to have my olive leaf on hand or I do IVH. And the IVH is a combination which has olive leaf, it has yarrow, which is vitamin C, and um, it's a great combination which is going to go in and keep your immune system strong. And what I do is I will muscle test you to see which one is best. And then it has a little bit of um, uh, rose hip in it as well, which is another vitamin C, a little bit of Murph is in it as well. So I'm just saying, you know, these are the two that we go to, but I prefer the olive leaf. And again, we would muscle test you. So that's what I did. And of course I took up my vitamin D. We all need to take our vitamin D. Just remember, vaccine or no vaccine, still take your vitamin D. Vitamin D is going to help the immune system 
And also you have to remember, we get the vitamin D from sunshine. Remember, we have dark days now and we're not having as much sunshine. So this is going to supplement. And then, you know, I personally take at least 6,000 units a day. Um, I feel as though a good five is a good base for you if you're not taking them. Uh, some ladies will have blood work done. When you have blood work done, have them check your vitamin D. I prefer to be up close to 80. I'm at 66, so I'm going to have blood work done again probably in February. And so I'll check and see how it is then. So I bumped it up another thousand. So we'll see how that goes. So do your vitamin D, vitamin C, and then also you can do your zinc every other day. And then also there's the elderberry defense, which we just talked about that. This is a great combination and I will take it. I didn't take it this week, but like if I'm feeling like I'm really getting sick, 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 I would take this because it has vitamin D in it. It also has olive leaf in it. It has royal jelly in it as well. And it has elderberry in it. It's a great combination of all things to keep your immune system strong. So that's the one that I really, really like too if you need an extra boost. And there's people going uh, that are sick in the household. This would be a good thing to take. And you would take two or three in the morning and two or three in the afternoon as well. So that is a choice. There's different choices. And that's what I usually do is muscle test you when I do an event or if you come in for a consultation. Now, so we've got the immune system taken care of. We want to enjoy the holidays. We need to keep the body in balance. And remember, the first thing is nutrition. And so we know the diet's not going to be the best right now. So you can do the green powder, a teaspoon, mix it up and drink it in the morning, not in the evening, because it can bring the energy up and you don't want to have difficulty falling asleep at night. So nutrition is important. And then we have E for exercise. You know, I go to my, who's my therapy dog, the two of us go for a walk every night. We might, or every afternoon, because we've had to bump it up to like 4.30 now because of the time change. But we usually go for a mile and a half, two mile walk. You move, you don't move, you lose. That lymphatic system, <coughs> when we talk about it, we need to get it moving. And you feel so much better whenever you exercise as well. So, and you don't have to necessarily walk. Maybe you belong to the Y, you can go swimming. Uh, maybe um, you have a rebounder, you can do the rebounder. Maybe you go out to the gym and work out three days a week. And that's what I try to do. Maybe super fitness, I go to that three times a week for about 40 minutes. And then I still try to walk five days out of the week. It's my grounding. It's going back to nature and we need to do that. And all this technology today, you know, we need to go back to nature and, you know, it's too cold to walk out in your bare feet in the ground because that is total grounding. But I feel as though going out there and walking helps you with that as well. So also we want to do one final little cover thing before we um, go into uh, having sharing our guest Kathy this evening. Uh, what we need to do is prepare our digestion for the holidays. We've talked about eating the flour, <coughs> sugar, uh, and I love to cook during this um, winter months, you know, because I like my make vegetable soup and oxtail is a great uh, meat to use for your bone broth. And I make uh, probably my vegetable soup at least once every two to three weeks. And then we have a lot of chili as well. So I'm just saying the warm foods is what is nice during the winter time. And even at Christmas time, you know, I tend to make, um, we'll make the cranberry salad. Uh, we will have the fondue, we'll have a live salad, we'll have garlic bread, and we'll have the uh, corn that I bake as well. But again, when you cook your food over 118 degrees, you're killing the live enzyme. That's why you need to do fresh apples, bananas, you know, tangerines, things of that sort at this time of year. And then, you know, try to do, I go to Raisin Rack every week and get the live lettuce. I did have my, my lettuce is still outside. I bring it in at night if it's going to be in the 30s. And if it's in the 30s in the daytime, it comes in as well. Remember, I had the big lettuce container I got at Petiti's. 
So it's really nice to go out and pick my lettuce and make my salad at this point. But what I'm getting at, during the holidays now, during this Christmas season, we're going to parties, we're having friends over, we're baking, we're eating a lot of the dead foods. We have the baklava, we have the uh, cookies, the cutout cookies. We have all of these different things. So what is happening when you're eating like the dressing, maybe you're having a turkey and you're having dressing and you feel really tired and bloated and have a lot of gas. So that's where we come in and this is what I tend to do. What you have to understand, after the age of 50, we are usually lacking digestive enzymes. After the age of 30, we lose every 10 years, 10 to 15% of our enzyme production. And especially during the holidays, we have to take our enzymes. So like whenever we have Thanksgiving, and whenever we've had, we've had Thanksgiving and then having Christmas, I will have the enzymes on the table if anybody needs them which we all do, but the younger folks don't, but the older people do. So we have two different ones. We have the Gut Restore, which is my preference. That's the one I muscle test for. And then we have the food enzymes. And this has the hydrochloric acid in it, and it's gonna help break down your food and help with the absorption better. So these are the two things that you need to consider because like I said, after the age of 30, we lose 10 to 15% of our production every 10 years. So 40, you're losing another 10, 15%. 50, you're losing it. And when you cook the food over 118 degrees, it's dead. There's no enzyme in it. That's like when you eat out at a restaurant, you know, that it's very difficult to eat out at a restaurant. You don't know where the meat's coming from. If there's hormones, antibiotics. You don't know if the seafood is raised internally in you know their, its own pond or says fresh out of the ocean you don't know so that's why i prefer to cook at home okay and so we're giving you some ideas like i had uh, turkey meatloaf last night with the mushrooms in it oatmeal as well and um, no bread things of that sort and i had brussels sprouts with it as well so we had something green so what you have to do is prepare for your digestion and support your digestion during the holiday time. So, <clears throat> just remember, health is wealth. And there's three things that we need to do. We need to try to eat as best as we can. You can be bad one or two days a week, especially during the holidays. And then we need to do the exercise, and then the two S's, stress and sleep. Everyone is so stressed, and like I said, we can muscle test you for maybe um, Stress J, maybe Seven Flowers, Valerian Root, and see which one is best for you. These are plants, they are nervines. They support the nervous system. And plus, when you go out and exercise, it's gonna relieve a lot of that tension, and you're gonna feel so much better. Put on your toboggan, put on your, your scarf, you know, and go out and take the dog for a walk, or take the kids for a walk. You know, take the grandkids for, you know, go just for a walk and enjoy the cool breeze today. So just remember, health is wealth. So anyway, we're into the holiday season, so just remember there are choices we can do uh, for Christmas. We do gift certificates. You can give the gift of health, give them some vitamin D. We have ear candles as well. These are all organic because all your cotton today is 99% genetically modified is not good. And I love these because you burn them down to the red little mark and then you're done. And it's a very relaxing, a great stocking stuffer to put in for the grandkids. It would be very nice. I know my grandsons like for me to do it. Or you can give them some vitamin C or some chlorophyll. Mm -hmm. Just remember something that they can support their body with. And then don't forget Give yourself your talents. Maybe you have a grandma or an aunt or uncle needs a little bit of help around the house. Maybe paint, paint a room for them. Or maybe the, help them clean out their garage. Give yourself the gift to share it with someone else. That is a really good gift. Because many times, what do you need for Christmas? We need to share our talents 
and share something for their body as well. Even gift certificates like the Soul Pizza, places like that, or Raisin Rack, things like that would be very beneficial too as a gift. So anyway, what we have here this evening is Kathy. Thank you for being here, Kathy. Thank you for having me. And she's here from um, the Manny Goats Naturals, and uh, they make soaps out of goat milk. So how long have you been doing this, Kathy? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. Wow. So how did you get started in this? Uh, it started with a goat. That's what we like to say. Um, <laughs> we, we bought a goat, and my daughter raised it for the fair. Right. Um, then one goat led to more goats, and we had <laughs> right. a lot of milk. And you have chickens and everything and else, chickens, right? Chickens, ducks. <laughs> yeah. So do you live on a farm as we well? We do, in Hartville. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice, nice. So I had Kathy on because I wanted to share with you why we need to go to a organic, natural soap, because we live in such a toxic world. You've heard me talk about this, being now that I'm a natural path, our disease today, standard American diet and toxins. Mm -hmm. And this is why you have such great products. Mm -hmm. So um, how do you make these soaps? I mean, what is your probably your most popular seller? In, we have three lines. We do goat milk, camel milk, and we do have a vegan line that's made with coconut milk. In the goat milk, I would say the lavender tea tree oatmeal is the most popular because it does it all. So you have the colloidal oatmeal that um, keeps the moisture in. It also is a great exfoliator. Mm -hmm. You have the tea tree, which is your skin healer, does good for acne, um, uh, just any kind of uh, skin condition you might have. And right. then we have the lavender, mm -hmm. which is good for, for the acne and psoriasis and such, but it um, it also is a, a great calming essential oil. Right. Um, it's good for um, uh, bug bites, bee stings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it just has a lot of a lot of properties to it. You know, that'll will help with a lot of things. You you think lavender and you think calming, but it also helps with sunburns and right you know, many things. Many absolutely, things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. Um, what are some other things that you carry? So we have the soap. Oh, do you have the little balls? Oh, we do have the oh, dryer nice, balls. So nice. you can get rid of the dryer sheets and yeah. you can use those. And if you want a little bit of added help with um, the static cling, you can put a little bit of um, vinegar in your washing machine where you would put the fabric softener. Okay. And it's also cleaning out your washing machine at the same time. Now, do you use the white or the brown vinegar? I use white. We don't use the apple cider. We're worried about staining clothes. So right, we just right. stay with the white. So how much would you use? A uh, quarter cup is what's really? normally recommended. You don't have to do that. Yeah. And like I said, it also helps with cleaning out the washing machine, which gets kind of gunky. So. Right. Well, so tell me about the dryer balls. Can I see one? Mm-hmm. We make those out of uh, wool that we buy from a local farm. Nice. And um, and then we just wrap them. Those are 100% wool, um, yeah. one ounce of wool. Nice. Put them in the washer and dryer to get it to bond together. Nice. I, w I would like three of those. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I was um, visiting with my sister-in-law. <laughs> and I was telling her about these. She said, well, I had those. Well, she brought it out. It was a plastic one with balls. I said, no, 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 oh, no, no, no. They no, used no. to. Yeah, and I remember yeah. those back in the day. Right. And I'm stuck on those as well. And they last for a <clears> long <throat> time. And another benefit is that they will dry your clothes quicker. Okay. That. So, but, but the trick is to, the more the better. So one's not going to do, do right, it. Right, because so. I have like four. Yeah. And then should you change them every year? Um, if they get a little bit bad, you can throw them in the washer again. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, I've yeah. got the ones I'm working on are probably about three years old. Okay. And so, yeah, you can wash them again, but really, you're putting clean clothes in, so yeah, really, there's not that and much And then you problem. can even add an essential oil to that as you well. You can. Um, the rule of thumb is to use something that you would cook with, perhaps lavender, rosemary, something that heats well. Okay, good. And very little. Very little. Yeah, you just don't want to dab. Put, yeah, just a little dab. Actually, I'll just take the essential oil bottle and just do this. I right, don't even right, put a drop right, on right. because a little goes a long way. So you prefer the rosemary? Rosemary is a good one. Um, you could use thyme, anything that you would cook with, lavender, mm -hmm. um, something like that. I'll have to bring I'd stay uh, away from the citruses. They tend to leave a little 
they can leave a little stain. Right. Yeah, because I have my um, rosemary in our bedroom. Okay. Oh, it's up this tall. Yeah. And it's cooler in the bedroom, and rosemary likes the cool weather. Right. So I think I'll bring that for the show next week and put it on the show. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought of that. You know, um, do you have a rosemary plant? I don't. We work with Pegasus Farms. They okay. grow their own rosemary and lavender, and we get from them, and then we will steep those herbs into olive oil for 24 hours. Okay. Then we will drain the, the herb out. We will put the olive oil into our soap. Okay, And I then got we it. will take the pieces and put into the soap too for just added. Right. And so we just, we buy from them. Nice, yeah. very nice. And it's all organic as well. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. very nice, very good. Yeah. Okay, so tell us, I, so I love that the was balls. one of the I ones. Some of those. <laughs> And so that was the one soap I was talking about was the uh, infused with lavender. Mm -hmm. That's our new one. Mm -hmm. And then another one we just started a few months ago was infused jewelweed. Jewelweed, oh, yeah. as you know, is yes. is um, helpful for poison ivy. Right. It'll help with the itch um, and and that it won't necessarily keep from the severity of it. It might keep it down a little bit, but it's going to help with the discomfort a little bit. Jewelweed is also an anti-inflammatory and an antifungal, and they've been using it successfully to treat skin um, ailments like eczema and um, bug bites, rashes, fungal right. infections as well. Well, yeah, because jewelweed is the plant that grows right beside poison ivy. It does. Yeah, it does. Exactly. And uh, we don't have it because our goats eat our poison ivy. <laughs> and so we don't have it, but there is a farm. Um, we're in touch with a lot of local farmers right. and they have some of our needs. And she has a ton of it there so we one day we went and harvested it so it's hanging in our garage right now drying right and so that's where our jewel weed came from so it's really nice that that grew naturally right, no chemicals right, right, or anything right, that we have to right. worry about nice because when nice. you buy things you just never know right and so it was nice to to actually be a part of the production of it right right now the shelf life of this soap is what indefinite there really isn't a shelf life as long as you keep it in a, a Cool, like a dry cool, place. dry area because right. um, I don't recommend storing it in your bathroom with the steam and everything gets to it and, and you don't really want that. But um, if you put it in a cupboard, close the door in your bathroom, you're fine. Um, but I wouldn't just store it open in a box, you right, know, right, that way. Right, 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 uh, Shelf life really is not a problem. The longer it sits, the more it ages, the harder the bar gets, the longer it lasts. Okay, yeah. So it's nice. unlike some of the lotions in that where you have to really watch the shelf life. Soap doesn't really have one as long as you take care of how you right. store it. Well, and the thing is, doing the research on the soaps that you buy, not to mention any names, mm -hmm. but say like Dollar Store, or Walmart or whatever, there's a lot of chemicals in those soaps, right? Yes, you have to be a, a label reader. We, yes. we tell everybody at our shows or ones that come to our, our farm store, just because it says natural does not mean that it's good for you. Right. Um, one of the n number one ingredients that you're going to find in commercial brands is sulfates. Right, and it's a, dry. It's a cheap filler mm -hmm. that they can put in their soap and... and um, but it's one ingredient you don't want. It's going to strip your body of the natural oils. Right. And a lot of times when people come to us and talk about how dry yes. their skin is, I'll say, yes. well, what do you use? <clears throat> and, you know, we're not here to bash anyone. But a, nine times out of ten, it's going to be what they use. Right. That and take essential fatty acids internally as well. Right. I always call it like got snowflakes on their skin yes. <laughs> because it's that yes. white look. You yeah. Know what I mean? And that's. That's one of the remarkable things about the goat milk, how it absorbs. Uh -huh. And so, you know, a lot of our products that you might use just stays on the surface, but this goes below the surface, so it's going to get those bottom layers of skin, and that's why we get a lot of repeat customers like, this is so good, I was so dry, the furnace is on, and right, my skin right. is just cracked and dry. And right. we get a lot of diabetics um, that come to us because they have the cracks in their skin. Ooh. And so it really does help um, right. if you've got to be faithful to use it. You know, one day here and one day there is not going to help. You've got to be consistent a couple times a day. Mm -hmm. And we found a lot of success with that because of it absorbing. Nice, nice. Do you have a lotion at all? We oh, do. Yeah. We have a couple of our essential oils. Um, this one is a frankincense and myrrh, and one is a sandalwood uh, rose. Nice. Um, <clears throat> those are a couple that some of our customers have ordered. Can I smell it? Mm-hmm. Mm, it smells very, very that, good. That's a pretty, pretty 
pretty new one for us, yeah. Nice, sandalwood, and, uh, yeah. So, and rose. then we make it in two consistencies. We make it in the lotion okay. where you can have the squirt bottle. And then some people like a thicker one. And okay. so we have it in a cream, which they feel gives them more coverage than a lotion. Okay. So it's going to be the same ingredients, okay. but it's, um, it's going to be uh, thicker. Right, right, you I know, understand. So, but yeah. then that one there is one of our camel milks that has <clears throat> uh, frankincense and myrrh in it. And then up at the top is is our vegan line that we're just getting started with, with the coconut milk okay. instead of an animal product. Okay, okay. And that. So we want to get our product out there to everyone, even those that are not really interested in using the animal milk. Right, exactly. And so it's so. very good. So we're working on, um, we do make a lip balm with... Um, they they really don't have the the milk. We didn't like the consistency of how it felt, and the shelf life of the lip balms with the milk. So we are making we have it without, but we are making a vegan because um, our vegan friends do not like beeswax in their products. Okay. So we're using a a, a different wax. I'm experimenting, trying to find just the right recipe for that. Right. Right. Nice. And that so that'll give them an option. Right. Very good. And that so. So how many different types of soaps do you have? I don't really know. I mean, know. I'm looking, we I see so many <laughs> Yeah, these are just a fraction of what we have. Okay. Um, we do have several types. You know, we do have the, the essential oils with the three types of milk, but then we also have the herb soaps that we've just started out with, with the jewelweed and the lavender, and then we have a rose one, which is also really good for your skin, the right, ro yes. rose Rose is oil. very good, yeah. yeah. And then um, we have the rose herb that we've dried out and used in there too. And then also we have a charcoal oh, yeah. uh, soap that is great for acne because right. it's going to open up those pores. Mm -hmm. A lot of times our teenagers are having troubles because with the acne because the pores are closed. So this is allowing the pores to open up and allowing the products to get in there. And then we put a peppermint and anise essential oil blend mm -hmm. to help them further with the acne. Very nice. And that. So, nice. so we have like a lot of different types of soap as well as the three lines. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times we'll have people just contact us. Can you do this? We've seen this before and we would like to have <laughs> So you have can this. custom blend if you need to. Right, we do. We do. and. Um, it, it's nice being able to have those opportunities and then also we get a lot of people that are doing showers or events oh, for yeah. their church yeah. and they will want different sizes of soap so we can custom make the labels to say what they what their event is if it's a, a I just did a set of twins and we were able to put on their she wanted uh, the little woodland animals and then we were able to put from our shower to yours and you know nice. make them custom made right. nice. but she could choose what uh, nice. scent she wanted and everything so nice very nice so are you going to have an open house soon we're going to have our Christmas open house on December 2nd and 3rd from okay. uh, 10 to 4 okay and that's at your it's farm. at our farm in okay. Hartville okay um, you can check our um, website for more information which is nannygoatnaturals.com or you can email us at uh, info at nannygoatnaturals.com okay. and okay. to get all the information follow us on Facebook we keep up to date on there okay. and we're on Instagram as well so for Facebook how do you get on Facebook with you what is your uh, it's Nanny Goat Naturals, oh, Nanny Goat Naturals. yeah Facebook okay. slash Nanny Goat okay. Naturals Good. and we we keep everybody up to date on there as well as Instagram right and so you have five goats now I do and I have two expecting so okay. we're we were starting over with a new line um, the, the larger goats were getting too much for us to take for for breedings and that. So we have um, the Nigerian dwarfs now, so we're starting fresh um, with the bucks and with the, the uh, girls and everything. So they're a they're lot smaller. So they're, yeah, they're small, but they give off a lot of milk, though. So Now, do you have to milk these twice a day? Twice a day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So how much milk? Do you get? I haven't got any off I'm of that, my Nigerians yet, okay. but I've got some of the full size that were giving me a gallon each time. And really? each milking, yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. So how long does it take you to milk each one? Oh, uh, 15 minutes. It's not And not you're too. milking five? Um, not at this time, um, but, but I will be milking once they birth. Okay. And uh, we've got things stored right now for while they're 
while they're pregnant. Okay. And that since we're starting over, we had to kind of make some adjustments. So what do you do? So if you have extra milk, you freeze it? You can freeze it. It freezes very well. Mm -hmm. We put it in smaller containers so that we can just um, take out what we need right, at a time. Exactly. Yeah. So Makes we're not sense. thawing and freezing and, and right, that. Right. Um, so we're, like I said, we're starting all over with a new line. So we expect by next month to, mm -hmm. to be milking again. Nice. Very nice. So how much do the little pygmy goats weigh? They are about 45. Well, yeah, they're, my, my adults were at 125. So Ooh, that's, yeah. yeah, that's big. <laughs> so the babies right now are about 45. And I would say the mama, the two mamas are about 80. Okay. So, okay. of course, we don't know now that they've put on some weight. Right. The, the one gave me triplets in March. Really? And so we can't use her daughter right now. She gave me two boys, and we sold the two boys to a farm that really wanted some pet goats. Okay. And then um, we kept the little girl, but we can't breed her for a couple of years yet. She's too little. So do you tend to breed your goats as well, off and on? Or? We do. We, we do. do. Yeah, we, we have breeding on the farm. So you really have a whole business here with breeding, taking, make sure you have enough milk to do all your products and everything else, correct? Right, right, from start to finish. Yeah, very good, very good. But the thing is, I like the fact that there's no chemicals, there's no dyes, you right. know. So um, how much milk does it take to, say, you make a batch of soap, how much do you make at a time? It depends on what we're doing. It can be anywhere from eight bars to um, 16. And if we get real adventuresome, we'll try to do four trays at a time, but that that takes a lot because it'll be setting up while you're doing it. So I would say the milk content's probably about 30%, uh, probably and higher for the lotion. Okay, so uh, <coughs> as far as the... Uh goat's milk, whenever you're making the soap, does it have to sit for a certain time? No, we just strain it off and, and um, put it in the refrigerator, or you can use it right then if you Oh, really? It, it, it hardens right away? I guess I missed the question. Okay, the milk? No, like the soap when you're making it. Oh, I'm sorry. Doesn't it have to sit out and sit? If, yeah, it sits in the trays um, for... Uh, 24 hours. Okay. And then after I cut it, then I put it on um, drying racks and okay. it stays there for a couple weeks. Okay, that's what I thought. It yeah. had to, okay. I'm sorry. I mean, that's okay. I mean, this is a whole new one. Now, what is in the little white containers over there? Those are um, sugar scrubs. And this oh. one is a peppermint orange. And then this one is a, a lavender vanilla. And we'll put in um, coconut oil, a little bit of. Um, I put the sugar in and the essential oil. Um, if you wanted to, you could use milk, but it would be uh, powdered milk, and I don't want to use that because you don't know what's in it. Right. So we can't really use fresh milk because there's no way of preserving the, the shelf life of that. If you if you wanted to use some kind of milk, it would only be good for about six days. Okay. And so we just kind of, we have a few products that doesn't make sense to use milk for. Okay, like what products are those? It would be our salts and our sugar scrubs because we don't want to put, you know, powdered milk in them. Um, our bath bombs, we don't want to put bat milk in or um, the lip bombs. Okay. And that, uh, you just don't know what you're getting. And right. so it just makes sense to make them uh, milk-free. Okay. So you said, um, is there any color involved in these? The only <clears throat> color is the herb I put in. So the one that has the uh, lavender vanilla, I did put some lavender petals in. For color? Yeah. For a little bit of color. Right. right. Um, just so it's not just white. Right. Yeah, because I was wondering, I know you can use beets, the juice, for mm -hmm. color as well. Yes. Natural and turmeric for the yellow. And you can use a, a cinnamon also for coloring, like if you wanted to make a soap darker colored or, or that, you can use some cinnamon for that. Right. How fun. Very creative. Yeah. You're always coming up with new things, right? <laughs> you have to stay ahead. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Well, I really like the, uh, uh, the um, dryer balls. That's awesome. Uh, do you mind me asking how much are those? Uh, those are $15 for three. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And plus, it's 
all natural. Now, how did you get the color? Is that from the yarn? They use it. Um, it comes to me this way, but it's a natural uh, way that they dye. Okay. So there's nice. not like anything Any chemicals that's going to, right, right. Exactly. and it's not going to come off on the, the clothes. clothes. They right. have already tested it to make right. sure right. that it's set. Yeah, and I'll bet those are great Christmas sellers, right? They are. We sell a lot this time of year. Yeah, yeah. So I will send some to my uh, sister-in-law in Florida. Very good. Now, don't you also make goat uh, candy, like fudge? We do. Um, we make goat milk fudge. Okay. And... Uh, it's excellent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, because I, because I know you have um, your soap over at Cindy Petiti's at her organic store. We do. We get, we actually have our fudge in her cooler too. Right. I always get yeah, some we, when I go we over sell there. that over there, and then we have our shelf in her boutique that has our our soaps in that. Right. Exactly. So, um, whenever you make the fudge, are you using cane sugar, organic? Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, we're using the organic. Good, good. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right, very good. So what else can you share with us? We have the lotion up there. There's so many different things to choose from. <laughs> yeah, well, we could talk about a little bit of why um, we chose the coconut milk. Yeah, well, um, yeah. When good. we decided to do a vegan, we didn't want to just throw milk in there and, and say, well, milk's in it. We wanted to have... We wanted to stay with our theme of using milk, but we wanted to use a milk that made sense, that it wasn't just in there just to say that we put milk in it. So I started researching all the different milks, and the one that came the closest to what we needed was the coconut milk. Right. And it's because, like, the fats don't cl clog the pores. Um, it helps to moisturize your skin. There's fatty acids to help treat the dry and irritated skin. Yeah. It um, removes the um, harmful bacteria from your skin. <clears throat> Nice. And it also will help if you have like sunburn or um, swelling or itching, it'll help cool that and help it to feel better. Right. And so we thought that made a lot of sense to be using that because our goat and our camel milks are moisturizing. And so why wouldn't we want our vegan line to have something that moisturizes as right. well? Exactly. Yeah. And so right now we've got just the soaps and the the cream and the lotion but we're hoping to we we also make in the other two we make a facial cleanser we make um, shampoos and that we hope to be doing that with this as well someday all right so you have shampoos now we sell shampoo in goat and uh, camel milk right now really so tell me about the shampoo that's really good it to has a, a base in it that it's sulfate free for one right, paraben right. free and yes. it has a base in it that's got uh, milk and honey and um and I, I can't think my husband makes this and it, it takes a long time to make i was trying to think what else is in the base there's four ingredients but the first 24 hours is stirring constantly oh wow so you know he has to keep setting a timer and do other things right right and, um, and then he puts it in a great big five gallon bucket and for the next week, every so many hours, he'll go in and he'll stir, stir it again. It. Wow. So it the whole process is about a week <clears throat> to make yeah. it. And then you're going to add that base at the very end. And then if a person wants an essential oil added to their shampoo, they might pick a lavender or tea tree. We've had grapefruit orange before. Okay. Okay. And they can add it. Some people prefer not. But the really cool thing is that the pH is, our pH is similar to our pet's. And so we can sell it as a dog shampoo as well. Oh, nice. We just kind of leave out the essential oils. Right. Now, does it have a lather whenever you use the shampoo? Very little. Now, there is some coconut oil in it that will give it that lather and some castor oil. Yeah. But you don't want a lot of lather for shampoos. Okay. Because you're not going to get it all out for one thing. Right. And they recommend a low lather. So you're going to get some. Right. So if you want a little bit more, I'd recommend making sure that your hair is very, very wet first. Yeah. And um, the other thing is we use it as a conditioner. Um, instead of using a separate right. conditioner. It which we, all in one. We have made uh, one, but I think that a lot of the ingredients are similar so why would you do two steps mm -hmm. so what we recommend is the first time to go through there make sure you get everything out of your hair that you want you know if you used anything else in it right and then the second time make sure you're going from the scalp all the way out to the ends leave it oh. and take your shower really 
And while you're taking your shower, you're conditioning. Then rinse it out. Makes sense, yeah. So, okay. um, so you know, you're saving a step. You're saving money because you only need one product. And I like that you can use it on the dogs as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. And um, tell me about the camel. So how did you get involved, and how do you get the camel's milk? <laughs> I have to order it. I would love to find a local camel farm. But all, so far, <laughs> all I have found is people that just have a camel they don't breed you have to breed in order to get the milk of course and and so they don't have any milk and we actually checked into having our own camel but then <laughs> what do you do with all the baby camels you know so so we have to order it online it's it's pretty costly to well, get yeah, it to, I would to us imagine. but the reason behind the camel's milk was because I developed psoriasis one year and oh. I'm pretty sure stress did that right and I couldn't get rid of it, and uh, the doctors and beauticians, and they're saying, you know, once you get that, it just doesn't go away. And so I, I got on the computer, I said, okay, what natural thing can I do? Right. And it said camel's milk and tea tree. Was it in your, in your hair? It's, it was in my scalp. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So it said camel's milk and tea tree. And so I said, okay, so we used our shampoo recipe, and this time we made the camel's milk base. Mm -hmm and put the tea tree essential oil in it and I have not had any trouble since. Awesome. And I'm just saying it worked for me, you know, everybody's right, different right, right. and that, but it worked for me. So then we decided to make the soap and the cream. And actually the sales are pretty evenly divided between goat and camel. Really? Yeah. So why do they like the camel soap better? Some find it silkier. They think that it, it just feels silkier for one. Some okay. really are struggling with psoriasis, which works better. Okay. Camel's milk works better okay. than goat on the psoriasis. Right. Very interesting. Yeah. That's really, really interesting that uh, you have the homemade product. You know where it's coming from, you know, and yes. you probably ship around the area as well, Pennsylvania. Well, we, we ship around the states, but we also get overseas sales too. We've, oh, really? We've sold, we sell to Germany, England. Um, I'm trying to think of where some went to, France. So we, we, we get around, so. <laughs> <laughs> nice, very nice. And usually you have the ingredients on here as yes, well? Yes, they're on the back. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah, that you, I like that one. This is like, uh, this is the lavender orange oatmeal. And we have the coconut oil, the olive oil, sunflower seed oil, sassafrower oil, distilled water. Nice, very nice, very nice. Do you find many people that have a lot of allergies tend to use your soap, the more sensitivities, they use your soaps more? We do. Yeah. We, we get a lot of people that come in because they can't use anything else. We have a man that we met our very first year in business that still buys from us, but he has three or four pages of allergies, and he never could use anything, and Ryan was able to create a recipe. Nice. And, it, you know, you just can't say, well, I'll put this in and this in and this in. You know, he has to do the science behind it, and I right. leave that to him. I'll take care of the animals, but <laughs> but there is a science behind it, a chemistry to get right. just the right of this and that, but he buys from us um, by the bulk You're because right. he says he never wants to run out, and he said, you know, when when you guys retire, I'm gonna to have to buy a case, you know, <laughs> you know, just to make sure I have it and and that, but um, it, nice. it's been fun to be able to adapt to people. Um, right. Some people can't have the coconut oil, so we've had to go and what can we do instead, you right, know, and, right. and just make special things because they they just couldn't use anything right, else. exactly. And it's nice. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to share about your products because I know we had you on another time but then yes. you're always adding things <laughs> and we need to inform people this is available it's local and you do shipments as well mail mm -hmm. orders everything you. so you know this is a great opportunity for uh, good Christmas gifts as well Yes. So thank you and thank you for uh, me. anything else you would like to add before we close because we got two minutes left Nope, I think we covered everything. Okay, very <laughs> but good. thank you so much for okay. having us. No worries. So I hope everyone has a blessed Christmas, a good holiday. Enjoy your family. Keep your immune system strong. 
and Nanny Goods is right here in the area in Hartville, so you can always give Kathy a call as well, and she has a website, right? I do. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So have a blessed holiday. Be grateful and thankful for our many blessings. Thank you very much. Thanks. WCTV, Wadsworth Community Television.